to analyze every email, you need a computerized system to run through every single word or phrase in your incoming email, categorize it according to these four categories. Then you need to um, analyze your response against the same sort of criteria. And then you need to compare the two scores to see where there's a clash. Then you need to be told what needs changing, and then you need to change it. And no such system exists. No such system existed. I actually created one, or we made one. Can't claim all the, all the uh, accolades for myself. And so here it is. And in case you can't see it, it's there. There. So it's very subtle. It embeds into Outlook. And what, what you can then do is the, uh, the example that I use there is actually written there as an email incoming. And you then respond to it, just as you normally would, just click on reply. You then click on the send button, that one there. Sorry, I'm really playing down to you guys. Um, and then the, the program just takes over. So here the green, uh, the gray line there shows what it should be. And the green line shows what it is. And likewise, the gray line up here shows the visuals. And obviously, there's a big mismatch there. So then, you click on the View button. And it gives you all of the predicates here as a big list. And you can scroll down there. So you can either ignore them, or you can change them. And when you click on change on a particular one, then it will give you the whole paragraph so that you can then reword it as you want to. So once you've reworded it, it will then dynamically change as well. Now, the other applications of this idea, you can actually analyze all of your Twitter followers yourself by going to this website, mantea.com forward slash tweet checker. And it will, it, it will make your uh, status updates effectively more persuasive by finding out exactly how your Twitter followers like to be communicated to. Because ultimately, if you can work out how they think and how they talk, you can then communicate with them in the way that they prefer. And their responses are often better. You can analyze your Facebook friends by going to mantea.com forward slash FFC. Loads of pen scribbling there. And here are some of the results that I've got from it. Um, Manteo was recommended to us when we attended an email best practice seminar. We gained a 42% increase in click-through traffic just by changing the email subject to be more positive. That was an event um, that she wanted everyone to go to. And basically, she said um, in the subject header, it's something like uh, visit, our, um, visit our event or come to our event. And I said, that doesn't make them feel special enough. You need to really engage with them and make the email the invite. And you know, people like to see invites. I was talking to someone um, over lunch about the best sales technique. And, um, and I, I was thinking about it. And I thought, actually, there was one particular guy who was fantastic at getting my engagement. And all, all I did, I was walking into a supermarket. And he held up this piece of paper that I couldn't read and just went, have you heard the news? And I just thought, what on earth is he talking about? What's that? And I couldn't see it. Walked up to him. Instantly, he had me. OK, I didn't buy from him, but it was a great technique. And, um, and what we did with this particular email, we said, invite only email marketing seminar, or whatever the seminar was. I can't remember. Um, Neil Bullman from Business Link said, it, certainly, it will certainly exceed your expectations. And as I said in my blurb, uh, we've got 900% increases in turnover some places. Excellent professional product. You know, I've, got, I've got loads of these things. Um, we've definitely seen a rise in our inquiry levels um, and bookings. Research the highest academic standards. Bless him. Um, knowledge of the human brain is astonishing. I'm starting to blush now. Every business should think about having this. And so what I decided to do was to start selling it. And it's normally £497 per person if anyone is interested. But I've decided to give a special conference deal for today. £250 if anyone does want it. So come and see me in the speaker's corner. But I'm not going to push it too hard. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Who has a question? Let's rephrase it.
Yes. Yeah, in, in, um, in terms of responding directly to an individual email, I can see exactly what, you, what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, can you uh, recommend anything in terms of if you were to send out an email shot to a uh, you know, wide audience, whether you, yeah. you know, would you use a particular NLP techniques? Um, yeah, what's really interesting about that is that if you were to use kinesthetic language to a visual person, they would be turned off. But if you use kinesthetic and visual language to, an, uh, to a kinesthetic person, they would ignore the visual language and hone in on the kinesthetic. So with a, an email shot, what you'd be um, looking for in that analysis is a full 25% split if you can. Um, I've done that with uh, newsletter articles and with press releases. And what I found is that I sent out a press release um, one day and it just didn't get published at all. Um, the following week I then rewrote it to use different predicates from different modal um, different uh, representation systems. And what I found was that they published it immediately. And they published it in full without any editing. And do you find that there's uh, an equal 25% split between those four? If you can get as close to that as possible. But yes. In terms of demographics, I mean, it, it, for example, if, no, absolutely if, not. No. if our audience is, um, I don't know, 75% female to, yep. to male, is there then a, would you then split it further between you know, more no. kinesthetic than... Yeah, Bandler did some work on that, actually, and um, I think Grinda, Grinda also mentioned it in Whispering in the Wind, that um, there tends to be a, a higher percentage going towards um, visual and then auditory, then a mix between kinesthetic and audio digital after that. So from that point of view, no, there is a higher split towards visual, a much higher split towards visual. visual. And if you're going to use any one particular um, representation system, I definitely use visual. But the point is that people don't tend to pay any attention to other representation systems other than their favoured one. Right. And so, and, and yes, everyone is multi, um, multimodal from that point of view, but um, they only hone in on their preferred one, or they, they tend to only hone in on their preferred one. And so if you were to use visual rather than auditory, then it wouldn't be a very good idea. So I would, I would tend to split it 25% in order to satisfy everyone, really. Does that answer your question? Who else? Incidentally, I can't quite remember why I brought this one up. But, um, NLP, Joseph O'Connor says, it's psychological skills for understanding and influencing people. And I just love the fact that there's influencing people in there. Because from an ethics point of view, everyone influences people all the time anyway. It's just doing it consciously with NLP. Any more questions at all? I thought that was all absolutely fascinating, but the question I really want to ask you is, have you been wearing that waistcoat all day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting hotter, actually. <laughs> I don't know whether it's these lights or the pressure, but uh, yes. I just want to go on the microphone, to be honest. <laughs> you want to um, try out the yellow? It's great. Um, have you noticed in terms of vocational areas, such as, I mean, I've, I've run training courses for a whole group of scientists, for instance, yep. um, who, as a generalization, I would say they're more auditory digital. Have, is that something that needs to be considered if you're addressing engineers or primary school teachers who are predominantly female? For instance. Again, not really. Um, although, yes, I absolutely, totally agree with you. Scientists will tend to be audio digital. Um, Councillors and public speakers will often be more kinesthetic. Um, artists tend to be more visual, and DJs tend to be more audio. You know, that's. I don't know whether there is some sort of correlation with the reason that they go into these professions, or the profession themselves actually changes. Um, the perception and, and the pre preference of the individual. But when you're actually communicating to them, there will be some people, you know, I, I know a designer who's very kinesthetic. I know, you know, Al Albert Einstein, for example, um, was very sort of kinesthetic in his thinking, although he was a scientist. Um, Mozart, for example, was, um, was very visual, and he actually wrote down everything that he composed. Um, I suppose, you know, Handel 
might be something different again. And, um, and Beethoven probably wouldn't be audio come the end. Um, Leonardo da Vinci probably not either. Um, but when, when you're looking at different demographics like that, I think you need, to, um, you need to also bear in mind that there will be people who are outside of that modal operator. And so they'll probably um, be turned off if you only use that language. You, know, you, might, you might really turn, turn on some of them, but there is a risk that you're going to turn off others. Um, and so I would always, if you're going to send it out to more than one person, I'd always split it. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much.